y'all, Scott here. Let's roleplay. I'll be Sonic CD, and since I'm the only other person here, I'll also play the role of Scott. You. Sonic the Hedgehog on CDs. I've heard worse business proposals. Sonic CD, a game made exclusively for the Sega CD add-on for the Sega Genesis. Yeah, this was back when CDs were the hot ticket item in the game industry. If your game wasn't on a CD, you were a fucking loser. Compared to standard cartridges, CDs were cheaper to manufacture and could store loads more information. They could play high quality audio and not quality video. It was obvious why companies were trying to shift over to the medium. However, it really wasn't until the PlayStation that CDs began to be widely accepted as the primary format for video games going forward. The Sega CD was a really weird ashtray and video game console. It's fair to call it its own console. It required a separate power adapter and had its own library of games separate from the Genesis. But you needed that stinking Genesis for it to work, so officially, it's an add-on, and contrary to popular belief, it didn't completely flop. It didn't do great, but it didn't do poorly. 2.24 million units were sold. I mean, considering it cost $300 and was just an add-on, I think that's okay. Of course, it could have done better, and its lack of booming success can be somewhat attributed to the lack of killer software for the thing. There's sure over 200 games were released for it, but so many were just interactive movies. Interactive movies. Where they were just re-released Genesis games. Now, if we take a look at the best-selling Sega CD games, Sonic CD is at the top with a staggering 1.5 million units sold. That's over 60% of the Sega CDs out there. To me, that shows that Sega should have put more effort into making exclusive, unique games for the Sega CD instead of putting out Echo the Dolphin and Slam City. Don't worry, I already emailed Sega. This game right here was constantly touted as one of the greatest Sonic games ever made, if not the best one of all time. And then it became more readily available, and that notion somewhat went away. Sonic CD was always that mysterious classic Sonic game not many got to experience, the hidden gem of the series, the one that may have been forgotten or excluded from classic Sonic discussions. While it left just as much of an impact on the series as other titles, it's often set aside from the rest. Is it just because not many have played it, or are there some underlying issues? I don't like Sonic CD that much. While Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was being developed in North America, Sonic CD was being worked on by the original Sonic team in Japan. Sonic's creators, Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima, were split apart with Naka working on Sonic 2 with various members of the original Sonic team in North America, and Oshima staying in Japan working on a Sonic title for Sega CD with the remaining Sonic team members. Originally, a Sega CD version of Sonic 2 was being worked on, but as time went on, the development team wanted to create their own Sonic title for the machine, CD Sonic the Hedgehog. You should change that. Sonic CD ended up being the star title of the Sega CD, taking full advantage of the hardware with graphics and sound that couldn't be done on a standard Sega Genesis. It released in late 1993, a few months before Sonic 3 came out. Being released for an add-on only 2 million people owned and right before another Sonic game with a slightly more exciting title, yeah, that's a recipe for a game that just sort of came out. Sonic CD was always considered the hidden gem of the Sonic series, and it's obvious why. It was only available on the Sega CD originally and then the PC in 1996, that was it for the longest time until 2005 with Sonic Gems Collection on the GameCube and on the PS2 as well, only in Europe and Japan. A lot of people were wondering why Sonic CD wasn't included in a previous compilation, Sonic Mega Collection. All the original classic Sonic games for the Genesis were there, but no Sonic CD, just the opening and ending cinematics of the game were included as bonus features. CD was originally planned to be playable in Mega Collection, but Sega realized they could use the game as a way to sell a collection nobody cared about. Yeah, Sonic Gems Collection, I always instinctively pick the game up like this. Regardless of what you think about Sonic the Fighters and Sonic R, Come on, you were buying this game for Sonic CD. The cover art is Sonic CD related and only Sonic CD related. It's the only game specifically mentioned on the front. This was Sega re-releasing Sonic CD along with a few bonus games. This was how many people were introduced to the game, but then it became widely accessible in December of 2011 with the release of a remastered Sonic CD on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PC, and mobile devices developed by Christian Whitehead. This version was inexpensive on modern platforms and the definitive version of the game. I usually like to play the original versions of the Sonic games when I talk about them, but the 2011 remaster is the way most people swing these days, so I'll mainly be playing this one. But hey, let's at least give the original and Gems Collection varieties a shot, and just to clarify, Gems Collection has the PC version of Sonic CD on it. So Sonic the Hedgehog CD, apparently that's its legal name, but all its friends just call it Sonic CD. For the first time, we get an opening cinematic in a Sonic the Hedgehog game, and it's full-blown hand-drawn animation done by Toei. I remember watching this thing constantly on Sonic Mega Collection without even knowing what the hell a Sonic CD was. It's incredibly well done and conveys everything Sonic's character was supposed to represent at the time. Determination, 
with a bit of cockiness. Every frame of animation is just so full of life and it's just bursting with personality. If this intro had legs, it would get turbo laid. It's just bizarre that they put so much effort into an amazing intro for it to just get butchered in the Sega CD release. Now with the PC version going forward, it's shown in all of its glory, but the Sega CD intro is shortened and compressed as all hell. This works when it comes to some scenes, like when it zooms out from Sonic here, it's actually a more fluid looking zoom with the Sega CD compression. In the full high quality version, you can see it fade in and out, but overall, I just find it odd all this work was put into animation that just wouldn't look too great when it was initially released to the masses. So the plot of Sonic CD, Dr. Robotnik has chained a planet to the ground. That's Son of a bitch. That planet is called Little Planet, and he's in the process of roboticizing everything about it, on top of obtaining a bunch of time stones to alter time so he can take over the world or something. It's a game called Sonic CD, okay, who cares? There's Amy Rose here too, a hedgehog who has the hots for Sonic, but Sonic just doesn't have time for romance. Though he does have time to save her from the evil clutches of Metal Sonic, Dr. Robotnik's latest creation. There's like three whole things going on in this plot, holy sh**. This plot is perfectly fine for a classic Sonic title, just when I say it out loud, you end up having some questions. Why is he blue? Right off the bat, it feels like Sonic CD is more of a follow-up to Sonic 1 than Sonic 2. The title screen, the sprites, the worlds, it all feels like a souped up Sonic 1 to me. Like, oh man, it goes 3D here, that's amazing! So overall, it's definitely a Sonic the Hedgehog game, all right. Very much in line with previous games in terms of controls and gameplay. Just try to get to the end of the stage while exploring the levels for different pathways or other secrets. However, they just had to inject the game with something illegal. Jesus Christ, Sonic CD's stages are ginormous and are filled with colors. Maybe, maybe a bit too many colors. The art design of Sonic CD makes it feel like fun colors and shapes the video game, and that's about it. It's all fairly abstract compared to something like Sonic 2. The zones in that game felt like actual places in Sonic's world, while Sonic CD's zones feel more like theming an entire level to a specific color or something. Like look at all the zones, Palm Tree Panic, Collision Chaos, Tidal Tempest, Quartz Quadrant, Wacky Workbench, Stardust Speedway, and Metallic Madness. Half of those don't even sound like places, they sound like taglines for places. Now I'd be fine with abstract themed zones, but all the colors, all the sprites, and all the designs designs clash together into a visual experience where I have no damn clue what I'm looking at half the time. The choices of color and amount of detail make enemies and obstacles and other objects just blend into the background. It's a family tradition for me, I always accidentally run into shit because I'm going too fast in Sonic games. But in CD, even when I'm just walking around I'll get hit by an enemy just because I legitimately can't tell the difference between what's part of the background and foreground half the time, or a hidden spring appears out of nowhere, fucking what? Now I know what you're saying, Sky, you're colorblind, your kind isn't allowed to play Sonic CD, and to that I say it's okay, my kind doesn't want to play it anyways. The backgrounds are so damn busy. The patterns and color choices are so bold, it's hard to make out what's going on sometimes. Now, I'll admit, the art design is pretty cool looking overall. It feels like a nasty Sega CD related drug trip, but I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for. And for that, I commend them. But it just does not work for a fast paced game like this in its current state. They should have made the backgrounds less busy and more focused like they were in the previous two games, or make the obstacles and enemies just stand out more. But it's not just the art design I have a problem with. The levels themselves just feel too big and maze-like. It feels like there's no rhyme or reason to half the obstacles or enemy placements. You know when you're playing Sonic 1 and you're like, this stinks? That's Sonic CD. Sonic CD takes all its cues from Sonic 1. It's all the unfair weird level designs, copy and paste it 200 times, boom, that's a CD level. However, CD does have this time traveling mechanic. You'll find these signposts riddled throughout the level. Some take you to the past, others take you to the future. If you pass one of them, you have to go as fast as you can to maintain your speed for a certain amount of time, and then, oh, f***ing beautiful, I'm in green sky. So yeah, you can go to the past version of a level and destroy Robotnik's robot generator. If you do, you can check out the good future of that level. If you don't, you can check out the bad future. That's four separate versions of each level. That's four times the levels I don't want to play. Being able to see what a Sonic level was like in the past or future by just blazing past a sign in that specific level is an amazing concept. But why the hell did it have to be used for Sonic CD? This goes along with my complaints about the art direction. Half the time, these levels just look like random patterns and shapes. They don't feel like actual worlds. So seeing what they looked like in the past, that's not interesting. Metallic Madness, oh my God, it was purple. Look at Sonic 2, Chemical Plant Zone would be incredibly interesting to see in the past or the future. So would Hilltop Zone, Casino Night Zone, Oil Ocean Zone, these are actual places. I can live and die without ever seeing what Collision Chaos looked like in the past. I'll give it to him, that is a really great concept, and while well, just beating Sonic CD in one go by just getting to the end of each level and nothing more takes like two hours, traveling in time to see what the past, bad future, and good future of each stage looks and plays like definitely adds a lot of replay value there. Each playthrough can be way more different than each playthrough of Sonic 2. 
The problem is, I don't care about these level designs in their current state. Showing me what the prehistoric version of Tidal Tempest looks like isn't interesting, because the current version already isn't interesting. It's like showing me what the future of this Jackson Pollock painting is gonna be. Now, like I said, to time travel, you need to go past a future or past sign to go to the past or future. Run like hell, maintain speed for a period of time, and boom, you're golden. This is the worst. These levels are crammed enough as is, with as many obstacle springs, spikes, and enemies as Naoto Oshima could possibly dream up. And now they're asking me to run constantly for like five seconds at the same speed with no interruptions? Half the time, something gets in my way. The other half, I swear I maintain the speed, but the game says, no you didn't. And if you lose your speed, you have to find another signpost to walk across. Now, sometimes there are dedicated areas to travel in time, like two springs right next to each other. That's an easy way to maintain speed. But 90% of the time, signposts are put in areas that are like, here's a crater. So it's needlessly annoying to time travel with level designs like this. Now, this concept would work one million times better in any other classic Sonic game. I get that some people may find it fun to try and find areas to build up their speed, but these levels are just too busy and weirdly designed to be enjoyable to explore for me. Now, you'd mainly want to travel in time to destroy these robot transporters. You have to find them in the past of each and every zone to get the good ending of the game. That's all you get for finding them all. It kind of makes traveling to the future somewhat useless, like there's no point unless you really want to. But my god, is that a bunch of garbage work to not even get anything for. These levels don't feel like anything, they feel like a bunch of geometry to me. I have no sense of direction in these stages when exploring, and thus I don't want to explore to find these things just to get an ending video I can look up on YouTube. In Sonic 2, for getting all the Chaos Emeralds, you got Super Sonic, a worthy reward. In Sonic CD, you just get a different ending like with Sonic 1. Now, if you're looking to get the good ending, in my opinion, finding all the robot transporters is tedious, especially when you can just collect 50 or more rings to enter a special stage at the end of an act, like with Sonic 1. I'll say it now, Sonic CD is the worthy successor to Sonic 1. It's not a good one, but it's worthy. These damn special stages are actually pretty okay. They're not the greatest, but they're fine. You have to roam around this area, destroy the UFOs, get caught in the water, you lose time. When you get a time stone, get all the time stones to look up the good ending on YouTube. I'm not getting all the stones. I normally go through all the zones and comment on each of them, but I got nothing. Palm Tree Panic, it's another Green Hill type stage. Collision Chaos, I guess it's casino themed. Tidal Tempest, it's like Labyrinth Zone. Quartz Quadrant, Sure. Wacky Workbench, please stop. Stardust Speedway, eh, it's a fun and memorable race against Metal Sonic. Metallic Madness, hey Sonic can get tiny. There's not much point to this, it's just a fun little gimmick, kind of like the 3D part of Palm Tree Panic. The boss fights in Sonic CD are painfully easy, but incredibly creative. Like, yeah, this pinball boss fight is pretty much impossible to die in, you just have to get it to the top of the stage. In Quartz Quadrant, you just have to run on this conveyor belt to run down Robotnik's machine. That's not difficult in the slightest, but I can appreciate the idea. The music in Sonic CD is interesting, mainly due to the fact that Japan and Europe got a completely different soundtrack compared to North America. Now, many people will swear by the original Japanese soundtrack, and while it is great, the North American one isn't anything to pass up, it's still some great stuff. However, I'm obligated to say the Japanese variety is... it's still way better. You can actually swap between the two soundtracks in the 2011 remaster, alongside being able to play as Tails or use the more traditional spin dash. Speaking of which... It feels like every great new idea Sonic CD had clashed with another one of its great new ideas and ruins it. For example, the super peel out, you hold up and tap the jump button to take off at blistering speed. Pretty much like the spin dash introduced in Sonic 2. With that, you hold down and tap the jump button. The super peel out looks awesome, look at that, that's fun. But the spin dash is still here, and that kills enemies. The super peel out is a bit faster, but you're completely vulnerable. The spin dash was added to Sonic CD probably because they felt they had to after Sonic 2's success. It's a little more awkward in Sonic CD, but I'd rather use it compared to the peel out because it actually kills enemies. Like I said, in the remaster, you can swap this out for the Sonic 2 style spin dash. This really is the Swiss Army knife of remasters. God bless Christian Whitehead. That's Sonic CD. It's a game that annoys me to no end. It's not because it's a particularly bad game. It's okay. It's just... I love so many of its ideas. It's one of the most ambitious Sonic games ever made. But the execution of everything is just not well thought out at all. Traveling in time to see what the past and future version of the stages look like? Brilliant. Use this mechanic with stages that feel like psychedelic drug trips and not like actual worlds. You really want to see the past version of this, don't you? Let's emphasize exploration in these levels that just feel like random colors and shapes half the time. To travel back in time, you have to go as fast as you can, maintaining your speed for a few seconds. Makes sense. It's Sonic after all. Okay, we'll make you do that in stages that are cramped and filled with random spike placements and springs and bumps and enemies? Let's introduce the Super Peel Out, a fun new move of Sonic's that's completely ruined by the fact they got cold feet and added the spin dash at the last second. Why would you use this? Great collision detection? 
Don't even think about adding that. Sonic CD feels like a Sonic special stage turned into a full game. It's all about exploration, which requires you to go slow, but its main gimmick is time travel, which requires you to go fast. It's not a bad, bad game, but it's not one of my favorites at all. I always thought that it was considered one of the best Sonic games of all time just because of how elusive and strange it was. It was the great hitting classic Sonic game. But now, since it's been available to most people, uh, you definitely see a lot more criticism. I didn't find it to be much fun to track down all the robot transporters which nab all the time stones, so I mainly just blaze through the game going from the start to the finish of each level and that's pretty much it. It's incredibly easy this way and is really short, but even then, playing it like a standard Genesis Sonic title, I still find the other Genesis Sonic titles to be way more fun. Which is why I'm going to do something to this game I should have done years ago. Yeah, I'm probably not playing that again.